Welcome to the Strategy Mob Podcast. Tune in for everything you need to know to stay in the know regarding the automotive industry. Here's your host, Jason Harris. Hey, what's going on, Podcast Nation? It is Jason Harris here with Digital Dealership Solutions. Today, I have a very special guest, Mr. Mark Lavoie. Did, did I do it right? I <laughs> yeah, it right. I think so. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I did it right. Um, <laughs> Nailed it. Mark, thank you so much for taking the time to jam with sure. me today. Really happy to, uh, to, to, to be here today, so it's good. Hey, for everyone out there that's listening or watching and may not know kind of how you got started in the industry and kind of what you're up to right now, if you kind of give us that two-minute origin story that is Mark Lavoie, yeah. and we'll, go, <laughs> we'll get started there. <laughs> I'll spare you the Lavoie next time if you want. <laughs> I love it. It's great. <laughs> yeah, you, you got it right, so it's fine. Well, two minutes. I got to make it quick. Um, you know, I've been, uh, I, I've kind of been in automotive all my life, if you will. Um, no, actually, I started when I got out of, out of school, um, high school, if you will. I didn't know I could actually go work into the automotive industry, but I always have been like a really big fan of the industry, a uh, really big fan of cars, obviously. And, um, you know, I started a program and ended up uh, meeting what uh, one of my friends dad at some point at the gym. And he told me, you know what, we're going to see that school down uh, near Toronto. And um, it's a school about uh, the automotive business. I know you, you really like cars and everything. I, I've known you for like f- six years now. So the, there's, a, there's a spot in the car if you want to hop in. So <laughs> that was, I believe, on the Tuesday. We left on the Friday. And I was uh, registered on the Sunday. On the Monday, <laughs> I would tell my then girlfriend that I was going away uh seven like i was i was gonna live in ontario now nice. so that, that didn't end well so fast forward today i was able to you know do a little bit of everything mm-hmm. i did work in dealerships on in sales and f and i i was uh at audi usa for a year and a half uh, before i got some troubles with my visa and um I, uh, I also uh, worked into a really big agency in, uh, in Canada for the last six years, mm-hmm. uh, providing uh, online marketing services, websites. So I really got to learn a lot about the industry and how to help more dealers today. And um, seven months ago, I started my own business, which is called Autobahn Academy. I just thought I was kind of ripe or ready to take it on, on my own, you know go my own way and um, actually made the jump. And uh, today I'm helping more and more dealers um, make sense of the online business um, according like around the automotive industry, if you will. So that's cool. That's cool. And, and it, you know, stepping out and doing your own thing, man, it, it's, everyone, everyone always says like, Hey, congratulations. You're doing your own thing. I don't think anybody realizes how hard this is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Like, it, I get this asked all the time, right? People come to go, you know, Jay, I've been in the automotive industry for a while and I'm thinking about stepping out and doing my own thing. I'm like, are you really? Like, mm-hmm. do, do you really know what that means? What that grind is? You know, yeah. it's it's different, you know, being in the dealership and, you know, having, you know, having the support of the dealership and support of working for another agency. It's like working yeah. for others. It's It's a totally different experience, right? Yeah, it is. It is. And, um, you know, it's, I guess you have to feel ready and you have mm-hmm. some, you, you gotta have some kind of plan. Um, I don't know in my, in my own way, I was thinking about it. Well, I had been thinking about it for maybe two years, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, I, all, all, I already, um, I also had like a lot of good coaching from the pe- the purple, the, like the, the, the people around me. So I don't know, like, Preparing in advance and uh, asking questions before I actually make the move really helped me out because it's, uh, you know, it's tough. It needs planning and you need to align kind of your revenue generating activities versus Mm. (laughs) non-revenue generating (laughs) activities. And there's a fine line in between both that's actually hard to, you know, to to find somewhere. But uh, I'm getting better and I have not figure it out like I didn't figure out anything yet but uh you know every day is kind of different and uh I'm really enjoying well, it I, so I think far, that's the so. key it's it's through the act of doing right yeah yeah and, and and I find that's where you know um 
we're getting into training and coaching, right? Yeah. Like it's the act of doing, you know, it, just to, just to sit there and train someone on the activities is one thing, yeah. but actually doing those activities and coaching them through their efforts, it, it's an entirely different game. And, you know, I'll go into a lot of dealerships and I ask them about their training or coaching activities. They're like, I don't know. We train our staff. I'm like, Okay, that's yeah. cool. What, what are you training them on? And I come to find out that really all they're doing is just training on the activities. I mean, like, here's the worksheets that you fill out. Here's yeah. the brochures. There's the keys. And I'm like, that's not training. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. not coaching someone. You know, so look, everybody's kind of, uh, I would say, philosophy when it comes to training and coaching is slightly different. I'm curious what your approach to training and coaching is. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I've been thinking about that a lot for the last, I would say, four to six weeks um, because I'm, I'm starting to get feedback from our clients, right? So I, I, it's nice with the platform, I can see who's doing what. So I can actually see what content is of interest and, and not. And um, there's something I'm bringing on the platform is actually productivity training for dealers. Mm. It's not about the activity itself. It's easy to be busy right? So <laughs> <It is. laughs> you can be busy all day, like nine to nine. And, um, you know, you haven't done anything in the end that matters at least to make the business better or you like better in your business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it's nice because it's an, at the same time, it's, it's an introspector ex, introspection. Mm -hmm. No, I, I'm looking at what, what I'm doing. Am I being productive? What am I seeing? And what, what I'm kind of learning for two right now and I'm trying to, you know, help other dealers do the same thing in their own business. Because you know, you know, I think that's a great topic. In fact, that's something we could probably dive a little more into, right? Yeah. Is productivity. You know, look, let's talk about this new year since we are in the new year. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I've, I've had um, a ton of, of you know strategy sessions for this new year and i have reviewed a, a, a ton of um a forecast and look yep i don't have a whole lot of people that are forecasting substantial increases you know like the, the market's getting tighter yep you know yep. our activities and our productivity all right on a day-to-day -day basis in some cases or i think actually probably in a lot of cases is going to make the biggest difference in yep. our efforts moving forward. So let, let's talk a little yep. bit about productivity. When you, when you think of productivity, um, where do you see a dealership has the most opportunity in increasing their productivity efforts? Hmm. I think it all comes down to systems. Hmm. I, I often like to compare dealerships with football teams. I don't know if it makes sense for anyone. No, no, it totally does. I, I am a but big fan of the sports analogy. <laughs> it does for me, right? So I'm just, I'm just seeing like some teams, you qualify them like um, you'll call a head coach, like a, like a system head coach. So whatever the player is, in, is on the field, the outcome is up about the same. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the NFL, we've seen that with... I'm going to take the Patriots for an example. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of the Patriots, to be honest. Um, but you got to give it to them. They've been winning year in and year out with a great system. And with the turnover that's going on into dealerships today, I think you got to have a system. So whatever, whoever's going to be in place, it has to be at least, like the output has, at, has to be at least good if it's not going to be great every time. And um, that only happens if the objectives are clear and the objectives are, are going to be clear if you don't have too many. I've, I've seen, I, I've seen that. Uh, you, you did, I'm sure, but uh, attending. Oh, some, it's true though. Look, you, you, you can't hit a goal if you don't set a goal. No. <laughs> right. Like no. It, it's pretty straightforward. And like, you know, we're, we're talking about productivity. How do we measure productivity if we don't actually know what the end goal and objective is? No, it's true. And um, it's kind of, um, it's nice because over the, over, uh, over at Christmas, my girlfriend, she, she gave me like this big tech book on how to organize and, you know, try to like plan my old year as on the business side. 
because mm-hmm. I tend to have like a lot of ideas. <laughs> and I, uh, over time, I created my, what I call the graveyard. I got a, like a, a book where I'll, I'll list every, every single idea I got, whether it's in my business or it's something else, like the shiny yeah. object, right? And uh, it's getting thicker now, but it's, it's hard to organize and to narrow down on what, what really matters for today, this week, mm. this month, because it changes, right? So I'm doing, I, I'm really in a process right now of trying to figure this out for my business. And I think it's the reality of most dealerships and it's perfectly fine. I think it's, you, you got to find what's, what's fun and to, you know, setting goals and achieving them. Because if you set too many goals, you won't be reaching any, any of them, right? So you got to go for maybe one, two or three goals. I don't know. I no, no, it's true though. So like, right let, no, 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 no. But it, all right. So let's say this, we'll reverse engineer this, right? Once we have the golden objective, what's, what's really key when you see in professional sports is the routine. Yep. Like, you know, we have to think of when we go into the dealership, it's game day. Yep. You know, Monday through Friday, I show up to the dealership. I don't care what position you play at mm-hmm. the dealership. I don't care if you're the receptionist, the service advisor, the salesperson, or the technician. All right. It's game day. Yep. You know, and it's, so how do we, how do we, if we're going to be productive during the game, all right, there are a lot of things that need to happen prior to that. Uh, setting the goal and objective is one. Uh, creating and maintaining a routine, I think is absolutely key as well. Yep. Now, what, where have you seen, um, you know, uh, you know, you train and coach on, uh, with these dealerships. Uh, what kind of routines would you typically train and coach on? Um, what do you mean on the sales side or what, yeah, sure. uh, it, it, where you think the most amount of value is moving into this new year? Okay. Yeah. Um, wh- what I think is really left on the side is, uh, the people we actually know. Okay. Mm. We tend to, and I've been working with a company that we've, we've been generating lots of leads. And, um, at some point you get a, it, it, like creating the own lead is, it, is fun, but it's only a part of the job. So after that, you got to like try to qualify where they, where, where they stand. Okay. And more volume means more opportunities to actually fill the buckets. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that's the most, like the number one opportunity for dealers today is that they're not doing that as much as they should to try to, to, you know, qualify those new opportunities or, Actually, actually, the people they, they already know in their database try to revive some of them. Um, you, you, I don't know. I, I don't know if you ever no, seen no, with you know with the existing database. I, look, yeah. I, I know a lot of times people give me crap because I'm I feel like I'm the heavy and I'm always giving dealerships a hard time. Mm-hmm. But you know, let's let's look at you know the communication efforts to our current clients. Yeah, let's it's, it's crap. It's it's total yeah. crap. All right. You know, the only time we ever seem to want to communicate with a customer is when we want to sell them something. Yeah. And like, sometimes it's even too late as well. So. And, and a lot of times the timing's not even correct. It's, it's yeah. the method and what we're doing. Like, you know, it's like, if you want to be, let's talk about pr- being productive. You want to be productive. All right. Uh, with your communication efforts, you know, to your existing clients, yep. then, you know, stop bombarding them with just nothing but promotional information. Like, like bring some freaking value to the communication efforts. Yep. Well, as much as there's, um, you know, a schedule we're trying to get like the, to find a perfect schedule before when we get a lead to the sale, we should put more effort into the after the sale schedule. If you want, mm-hmm. maybe there's going to be like more, more spaced out, but you should still try to reach out once in a while with some value and not expecting nothing in return. Right. Because if you do, you you will sound annoying for for your client, and it's fine. <laughs> I, I I I've seen some dealers actually have that kind of process in place, but maybe is is it two percent of dealers, one percent, and the other ninety eight percent are missing small. big time because it, it's really really expensive to win a customer over today. If if they're making money, it's not a lot. Sometimes they just bite the bullet and understand they'll lose money on, you know, conquest deals if you want. But the whole but, game is trying to sell them again. So. Well, I, I had a dealership the, um, just recently I was talking to rent a private sale. And if you follow my content, you know how much I, I love those things. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and they're like, man, it just didn't work. 
It just yeah. didn't work. And I'm like, well, well come on. Like, really? I mean, it, it's only like the ninth time in the last 12 months that you've asked these people to upgrade or trade in their vehicles. You know, it, it, right. I think what it is is that our, our goal and objectives seem to be so self-serving that we're surprised that when we ask the customer to do something that is actually probably in their best interest, they don't want to do it. Yeah. Like, yeah, their their BS wall is so is so high, right? So it's 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 sad because like most dealers, they're really trying to do the right thing and they're running a good business. Don't get me wrong, it's really I don't I, I don't get how dealerships do it. It's a crazy business to be in. There's sixty thousand moving parts. It's mm -hmm. something else. I I I realized at some point I was not built for that, so I respect that a lot. But it's um, at some point it's it's also easier from from the outside perspective to see everything that's going on, and I think that's the fine line. Be like with coaching and consulting, some people hate consultants and coaches. I get why, but at the same time, uh, sometimes it's just fun to have like team up and you know. <laughs> Well, why, why, why do, why do people hate training and coaching? I actually don't understand because let's, let's go back to the, the analogy of a professional sports team, yep. right? Look, nobody, all right, in professional sports got anywhere without training and coaching. Like yep. it, you just don't take a group of individuals, slap them into a room and expect them to perform. That doesn't <laughs> happen. No, <laughs> like it doesn't, doesn't you know, but, but for some odd reason, that's how we want to hire. Like that's how yeah. we want to hire. That's how we want to employ people. You know, like I, I, the other day I heard, for, I heard from one of our dealer principals and he goes, Jason, I just need like a 20 car a month guy. What the hell is a 20 month car guy? So mm -hmm. you're just expecting to find someone that has already has all the training and coaching efforts required to consistently, all right, be productive enough to put out that kind of output. Like, no, yeah, like that's... it's not, it doesn't exist. You know, no. it's like, and the other thing too, it's that, that's that, that's that individual mentality. That's that, um, mm -hmm. uh, what do we call it? The, the superstar mentality. Okay. So it's like, you know, in our industry, we're constantly wanting to hire, all right, superstars, but we forget the boat at, in the same breath, we'll, we'll talk about the team. So it one in one minute we're talking about how we want to hire just superstars, you know, and then yeah. the next minute we're talking about how you know the team, the team's important. I got to focus on the team. It's like, well, but you're not mm -hmm. actually focusing on the team, you know. So like I think what it is is kind of comes down to what we were talking about earlier. It's all about goals and objectives. So you know if if our if our goal and objective when it comes to our training and coaching is self serving, then how can you expect that training and coaching to actually be relevant or uh, helpful to the customer? Yeah. So how do how do we make how do we train and coach people that's that is customer centric? That's my question. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, what at least what I'm what I'm currently trying with uh, with Autobahn Academy, I'm trying to simplify the whole coaching thing because mm -hmm. I get why. It's, it can be hard for a dealership to go off-site, um, at least like a part of the team, maybe it happens and everything, but sometimes it's hard to like empty a dealership. <laughs> like, empty okay, the but whole you know team, what right? though? It's excuses. Like, I, look, I know you're on one side of it. Maybe. I get to be on another side of it. Yep. I, I, it's bullshit. I think it's excuses. You think? Right? Yeah, 100%. Like a dealership's telling me, well, uh, I... I, I can't train or coach my team mm -hmm. because, well, th th then nobody's going to be here at the dealership. You know yeah. what? If you want a well-trained and a well-coached team, then you're going to find a way to do it. It's just, it, it, yeah. I, I'm getting, I, I know I'm a little, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little salty today. Um, <laughs> no, but, it, but it's okay because you're trying to provide results. So, you know, it, it's fine. What, what actually happened with um, Autobahn Academy as I, I wanted to do like a quick, like half a day thing with like a handful of people try to do like a session and everything. And mm -hmm. I got this, this objection that I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not going to send the people over. So I'm like, you know what? I got a better idea. I'm, not, I'm actually going to do it <laughs> online and I'm going to test that. Right. So instead of having like six modules, the whole thing, I'm, I'm dripping emails with training modules once in a while to the teams and they, they actually use it a lot. It's it, it, like the feedbacks have it's been amazing. And I think making it simple for them because it the trainings, the training is actually hitting the salespeople, hitting the FNIs, hitting the, like the managers, the dealer principal. And um, I think making it 
simple for them actually helps them because I, I get why it's, it's a crazy business at some point. They mm-hmm. don't want to like, they know they should, you know, get help on, on specific subjects. They should be going out to that training day, that symposium, you know, and, but it's easy to justify why they can as well. Yeah. hundred percent. So you have two choices at that point. So either you play a game or you don't, but some people will actually enjoy coming out of the, of the dealership, the craziness of the dealer at some point. And uh, it, it's fun. And the other guys just want to stay in and do everything and be busy and or productive depending on. So, Well, I just think it's, it's up to the dealership's commitment. Like there, there has to be a commitment level here. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's, I find that this time of year, you know, is, is a great time of year operationally to really focus yeah. on our training and our coaching efforts, yeah. right? Look, yeah. bottom line, it's, it's cold, right? Um, not <laughs> as many people are going to be coming into the dealership. You know, this is a phenomenal time to year to really focus on our operations and our processes yeah. and, you know, make sure that, you know, when it comes, you know, hunting season, that you know we're prepped and ready to really play the game the way that we're supposed to play yeah. the game, mm-hmm. um, but again it comes down to that commitment. You have to like we have to commit to it. You know it's like I don't want someone just to just to you know half-ass train or or coach their team just so they could check off the proverbial box that they mm-hmm. did it. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, I checked off the box. I did it. Yeah. I sent them to a course. Like what? Like, like, Training and knowing and why, is, knowing why it's important, like it's important is way that's a good one. more important, right? Because mm-hmm. I had this, the, that frustration with over time with, we, we sold software. It was like really complete software we had. And, um, at some point it was getting left on the table or, or left unused. So I figured at some point it's, it's not a matter of software or tools. It's actually a matter of, of mindset mm-hmm. and mindset bad or good, like especially bad is costing a lot of money to dealers today and poor them because, you know, they're, they're, they'll be pitching $300,000 on Google on AdWords on one side and the, on, on the other side, leads are left unattended, right? I don't know mm-hmm. if you saw my post this week, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was trying to shop for a car, but I, I just can't. Like nobody can gets back to me. And I'm not that known to be like people don't think I'm mystery shopping now. They don't know me. So w- what's the reason? Okay. So I, I mean, it, it was unboxing day. So I well, it, figured it's, it's, it's because we don't have a golden objective as a dealership. We have to find the why, right? You know, yep. why do we train and coach, you know, um, to your point about like, let's talk about spend for a minute here, because I have heard this comment several times, right? Yep. Well, it's expensive. Mm-hmm. It you is. Know, training and coaching is expensive. Well, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> but it's more expensive not to do it than it is to do it. So I'm gonna say, let's just let's make that real clear. But, you know, um, I'm pushing everyone right now as we're getting into this new year. There's a big push. You know, it's like everybody wants more, but no one wants to spend more. I understand that. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been on the other side of the table. I've run dealerships, you know, so I, I get I get that feeling. Now, look, for me, there are three reasons why someone ultimately buys a car. OK, it is product people and operations. Now I use the word operations, yeah. but what does that mean to actually to the consumer? It means experience. Yeah. So yeah. operation and experience for me are, ha- are words that go hand in hand. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. If you go to any dealerships, right? Google reviews right now, you're going to find almost nobody. All right. You know, in the Google reviews talking about the product and that's the only reason that they bought the car. No, you're going to see mm-hmm. review after review after review about how amazing the experience was how how great you know yeah. josh the salesperson or dean the salesperson or suzanne the salesperson was to them like makes sense it, too it's the people and the experience all right that is really completing that transaction all right it's not the product but every single all of our ad dollars every dollar we put out there is gets focused on one thing and one thing only and that's just the product yeah like, but the, like Let's face it, cars and uh, well, vehicles today are commodities and people are starting to understand that <laughs> because they, they, they're shopping <laughs> six dealership. They're going to say they, they're going to get, get the same Nissan Murano SV with <laughs> those uh, 19 inch wheels, whatever. Yep. So w- what's the differentiator between all, all, all those places? Because the, by the way, they're all pushing the same promo now. So w- w- as a human being, what, 
where am I going to get like the best connection? And it's a matter of luck at some point as well, because you might end up like getting answered by the worst salesperson in, in that dealership over there. And this, the, like the best on this one. And you know, it doesn't translate to what is, what's actually like the dealer is actually doing inside anyways. But, um, you know, it's. Uh, it, it, I think it's it, it's what makes the di- makes the difference between between good dealers today and uh, you know dealers are still struggling with uh, you know trying to find their sales because this year I, I I can't wait to see this year how how this year unfolds because it's going to be a good one. Mm-hmm. It's it's going to be hard. It's a twenty nineteen has been hard. Um, new cars uh, gross profit is down as well, so they got to do better, you know, and this is why I think at least, and you are, and we are, we're in great position for our businesses because we can actually help shave a few dollars. And um, as they think it's expensive, I think it's really expensive to own a dealership. But yeah, it's, it's are where they you're investing money. It's, yes. It's where you're investing the money. Where, where yeah. are they going to want to invest their money this next year? Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm going to push people to invest money into their operations and their people, which is kind of ironic because I'm, I run a marketing agency. So I, I'm yeah. literally, <laughs> like, I just got it is, but at that. the same time, you want your clients to succeed. If your clients succeed, your business will succeed as well. That's right. It's, it's, I don't think necessarily moving into this next year that uh, there's going to be any type of magic bullet, all right, from a marketing perspective that's yep. going to help dealerships sell more cars, service more cars, sell more parts, right? Like, I just don't see that. There's no magic bullet out there. No. So, you know, I really, really push dealerships to look internally within their operations and their people, all right, and how much are we investing into those, all right, that's really going to give us the results moving into 2020. Now, here's what I'm curious is let's talk about training and coaching when mm-hmm. there's so many things to train and coach on. There's yeah, it's pretty wild. Well. <laughs> I mean, it's a big, like, it, this is not a small thing. You know, I'm, I yeah. actually find marketing is a little easier because it's pretty tangible. It's like, I got yeah. Facebook ads, yeah. Google ads, yeah. Instagram, LinkedIn ads. Like, it's like, that. that's my space. It's a nice little small vertical. All right, but training and coaching can be a big thing. If people that are listening right now are watching to this, and they're, they're not in their head with us. Yeah, I agree. Like, I need to be investing more into my training and coaching. Mm-hmm. Where should they start? You know, where do you see the, you know, the, the lowest hanging fruit that brings the most ROI in training and coaching? Yeah. Um, I think when you, I'm going to take the, like the sports team analogy once again, but I'm going to shift over to hockey. It's, <laughs> It, you, I think you got to start from the back, from what's what's closer closer to you and closer to your chest and um, to your vest, right? I, uh, like you know that would be the sales. So what what's the what what happens before just right before the sales? Uh, so let's say we're talking about getting more clients into the door, then you want to sell those people. So if you take a step back from the sale, what happens before the sale, right? It's it's going to be the appointments. It's got to be the person showing up in the, in the showroom. So we're investing a ton of money to make it happen. Now let's watch how it's actually unfolding. And, you know, uh, you, you talked about experience and I think it's, you, you're on the, on the, on the right track with that because it makes a difference. I I've seen some dealerships invest in really little money and make huge sales, um, numbers because they were doing things right because they could control the input and the output of, selling activities, if you will, mm-hmm. they could match, uh, I, I, over time I called it, uh, I called it in my head, at least the, 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 the clutch effect, because some dealers will have a ton of leads, but no fulfillment because you got to fulfill on these leads. Right. And fulfillment will take a contact. It will take an appointment. It will take an actual, you know, sale in the showroom side of the ones happening online, but it's a really small portion now. But, uh, you know, I think how people interact with other people is the way to go now. And it's not, it's not a secret why sales training is really popular. If mm-hmm. you, if you put uh, sales training into YouTube, you'll see a hundred, <laughs> maybe a thousands, thousands of videos with hundred thousands of views each just because people don't know where to start. There's a lot of resources around that. So I think I would start 
at that point. And so that, you, start, you start with the sales process what, now, yeah. uh, and, and specifically uh, lead response or communication efforts. What, yeah. what would you say? Communication? Communication. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, I'm actually hundred percent there with yeah. you. I mean, I yeah. don't, I can't think of a dealership out there that I've met or have done business with that couldn't uh, benefit from uh, some mm -hmm. additional uh, communication, coaching, and training. So, yeah. you know, let's talk a little, what is your approach to um, training and coaching uh, a dealership's communication efforts? Yep. So if, if you want to set like a, like a simple process and simple, let's say, let's call it a goal. Okay increase or, or get better at communication with our clients. Some dealers are so far from this idea that, that like the, the smallest thing to do is just to set up like a, some kind of 30, 45 days process and say, you know what, you got to do this and this and that, and then try to add some value, go be, I don't know if you say, you can say that be mechanical about it, you know, mm -hmm. whatever they respond or not, you keep going, adding more value, bringing more information to the clients, um, you know, uh, shopping experience, if you will. And just by doing that, you'll set apart, you'll set yourself apart from the pack because no dealers doing that. They're all pushing prices. And when you can, you come in and people actually know they can walk into a dealership. They know they can do that by yeah. right now. It's all good. Um, you don't need to remind them every two days. I don't think so. No. So I look. I, I'm with you here, right? I love the idea of bringing more value, all right, to our communication efforts. Um, mm -hmm. Can you give me a couple of examples yeah. of what you mean by bringing more value in those in those yeah. communication efforts? It's it's pretty simple. You know, with the amount of information we have on hand, right? It's easy to say, you know, what I get a lead for a Jeep Wrangler one day. And I say, you know what, this is, uh, I'm here to help you. The next day you say, by the way, I had a demo like this two weeks ago or three months ago, and this was my favorite feature. Let me know if you have any questions. Five days later, you can send them a link to YouTube for a review that's favorable for the Wrangler, you know, and you can go on and on and on like this. And so once in a while, you got to ask for the, for the sale, which is, which is the appointment if, you, if they want to come in. But you can also say, you know what, I'm offering like a, turnkey solution for car salespeople. I'm, uh, I, you can actually do everything on the phone if you want. You give them, you empower them, I think. And uh, no, no, I, I think that's key. Let's actually, let's go a little more into that, mm -hmm. right? Because I do believe that there is value, right? There's value in the product. There's three reasons why someone buys a car, right? Product, experience, and people, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So th there's value in the product and, and we need to, I agree with you. I'm surprised I am having to say this. It's 2020, but um, you know, in our communications efforts, we'll go we back do, to basics. I know, right? Like we, we do need to be building better value within the product, but we also need to be identifying value in doing business with me as an individual, the people yep. portion, right? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. doing value with the dealership being the operations portion. Yep. You know, look at the end of the day, you know, um, we want a customer to schedule an appointment right? That's yep. pretty straightforward. That's what we want. But we don't give them any value to in actually doing that. Like, what is the value proposition, you know, for me being a customer to schedule an appointment with you? Yeah. Yeah. Do I, because let's, uh, let's be honest. They don't know us. Uh, they don't like us for the most part. <laughs> uh, the automotive industry has, uh, has a bad rap for a few bad and good reasons. And, um, you know, I, on, on my end, as on my end, as, as far as I'm concerned, I want to make it a little bit better for people, for everyone, at least, because if you sell, if you know a little bit more about how you could sell some products using online techniques, you make it a little bit easier on your staff, mm -hmm. you make it a little bit easier on your customers. And it's, it's a little bit more fun because done properly it's it's a really nice purchase buying a car right it, it it's it'll give you so many it'll bring so much joy to your life if you will and uh we should concentrate on that otherwise no i agree with you the vehicle can bring uh, a huge amount of joy to an individual but for some yep. other reason the experience doesn't it doesn't like you know for a lot of people you know there, there's a lot of bad experiences out there in the automotive industry yeah and, I know. and 
and, and I think that's where the value. So we're talking about like increasing, you know, our, our appointment ratio through value driven communication efforts, mm-hmm. you know, so what would you say uh, two or three um, value points for a dealership needs to communicate to a prospective lead? Well, one thing for sure mm-hmm. is trying to understand and show empathy. Um, you know, trying to understand your own, your own customer will help you. And it's, it's true with car sales and it's true with B2B sales. Uh, you're in the same boat. Uh, if mm-hmm. you want to sell your services to someone, I guess you have to ask questions. Otherwise, you, you assume you know everything and you're going to tell them how it's going to be. And guess what? It's not going to be the way you think. And customers today are, are smart. They've been shopping for six months before they send you that lead. So you better keep that in mind when you're, you're trying to advance through the sale. And uh, there's a reason why they communicate with you today. So you got to keep asking questions uh, until you find the right one. Because everyone's different. Some dealers will get a thousand leads a month. Those thousand people will not buy at the same time in the same, the same time frame at the same rate, have the same comfort to buy online on, or offline. Sure. Some people won't buy buy at all. You got to weed them out and try to not get rid of them, but at least push back, like try to understand if they're going to buy this week or in six months, because it's a client. It's, it's a prospective client. Just got to make sure you put your energy at the same, at the, at the right spot and on the, on the right people as well. Um, so that's one, that's a big point, but, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. I think it, it covers what, what, what has to be done today. Um, like just asking questions will set you on the right path because I don't know, I, it's, it's the way I've always worked with, uh, with, with, uh, with car, uh, with car buyers or even with dealers on my, in my time. So, uh, back in the days, it was eight, nine years ago. Mm-hmm. I worked into a, an Acura dealership in 2010. No, that's, that would make it 10 years ago, <laughs> but I don't know if you remember what, uh, what, what was the lineup of, uh, at Acura 10 years ago, but uh, it was the, the, the really famous ZDX. Yep. Um, the MDX was not matching the, 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 the three German, uh, SUVs. The upgraded Civic was not mm. making the cut really. So you had to find ways to actually make sales, right? So what I actually started doing is take like the whole database. Yeah. That's all secret here. And uh, I started just calling people, asking for a question, confirming information. I would not pitch them any monthly payment <laughs> to replace their own car. It was a little bit more tedious, but at the same time, I doubled up my sales almost overnight doing this because they would ask me in the end if they could come in and take a look at the new TLX or the new was no, it was not the TLX at that point. That was the TSX or, you know, but you build value through communicating on a one-to-one person trying to understand. So, yeah. so that's, that's the other part, right? So look, there's dealership needs to identify their value proposition in doing business with them. And the fact yep. that, you know, we just say we're number one in customer service. That's not enough. Like that's not tangible for, well, you know, for it's not real for anyone until they see it by there isn't thing there, there, you know, like I saw in an email response the other day, um, in the email, they said that they were a family owned business. And I'm like, what yeah. the hell does that mean? Like no one cares the fact that you're a family owned business anymore. Now, now what does it mean to you as a dealership that your family owned? How, how does that get translated out to your operational efforts? That's something that people care about. But the fact that in the bottom of this guy's email was like, you know, family owned for the last 32 years. It's yeah, like, it's, that's, it's, not, that's I, not a reason for people to want to come do business with you. It's a good start, but it's lacking substance. And you, you got you to gotta show why it's important and why it makes the difference. It, are you hosting like a big, I don't know, a big barbecue? And I don't know. Like you got to go really further if you want to prove someone that your family, there's a big difference between having a family mindset mm-hmm. and family owned. <laughs> um, I won't get into this, but it's, uh, it, it's gotta be better. You know, you gotta be, you gotta do better in 2020, at least like having, having like free coffee and free Wi-Fi. I mean, I, I don't, I don't understand why we still see that as a value proposition, proposition, you know, you know no. and, and 20, you know, in, um, 
in 2010, maybe in uh, 2007, maybe because data was kind of expensive, but now you got free Wi-Fi. Oh, oh. Like okay. it's just, no one cares. It, it's not something no. that brings value necessarily to them. So no. I, 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 I'm with you here. I think dealerships and look, it's not an easy question. You know, um, like this is something that's going to take a dealership time, you know, uh, for for them to define out what their, you know, operational or experience advantages over visiting another location. Mm-hmm. I, I find the easiest way for people to do that is that, mm-hmm. look, we all know what we do, right? Hey, we move cars, we sell, we yep. sell, we move metal, we, we service cars, we sell parts, and we all know what we do. We, and for a lot of times, sometimes we know how we do it, mm, mm-hmm. documented or not. Mm, that's kind of an iffy, right? But why we do it the way we do it yeah. is the value to the consumer. That's what needs to be communicated to the consumer from an operations perspective, right? Yep. And it's, it's, it, it's really what could be put up front when you're sending communication with your existing or prospective clients, right? Your prospects. Because you like right away, since no, since no one's doing it, you'll get an advantage of actually showing why you care and why you do it and why you're in business. I think we, we're starting to see that in more in, in businesses outside of automotive um, business owners and, you know, managers or really big companies or are, are really taking a stand now or being more present, being mm-hmm. a bit more, I don't know, the attractive character, if you will, of their own business. And it's, it draws people to them. I'm going to take like a crazy example, but look at Tesla, the, the, the amount of things they have done so far because of the correct, like the character that, that is Elon Musk. You can like the guy or hate the guy. I mean, remove Elon Musk or at least like stick with the same guy, but leave him in his office and not going anywhere and not like Tesla wouldn't be where they are today. I agree, hundred percent. I think we can learn about that, and uh, it's we're entering an era where people want to see flaws about people. We've seen that into like, uh, you know, superhero movies. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, it's true though. But you know? actually, to your point, what it is that people want a story. Yeah, you want a story. They want something that they can chew on, something that they can take with them, something that you know. When someone asks them, you know, where they bought their car from, they can they can share that story. They can give that story, right? Yep. You know, and that comes down to the. So, guys, what we're talking about right now, if you're listening and watching this, we're we're, we're really talking about value, and the value comes from that story that we tell them, and the impact of that story, the stickiness of that story, where they're going to want to share that with someone else. Um, yep. You know, the, the story of the product is pretty well defined by the manufacturer, and that's cool, right? Still think the dealership's got to do a decent job of telling that story. You know, mm-hmm. the, the story of the dealership, all right, that's that. That, that value proposition in our communication efforts. And we have to define that story of the dealership, right? The third yep. one, and this is the next one I want to get into with you, is mm-hmm. the story of why do business with me as a person? Yep. Like as it, literally making a human to human connection, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay? And saying like, this is why I, you should come do business with me. There, there, there are seven Nissan stores in my town, all right, that probably equates to around around 100 Nissan salespeople. All right, here's why I'm, you know, here's why you should come do business with me. When yep. you're training on coaching, what would you say to someone who's trying to identify that, yeah. that type of value <clears throat> proposition? I think since it's a people business in the end, right? Because the, the dealership's quite the same, the, the car's quite the same, are mm-hmm. quite the same. I think you can take a moment and expose your strengths and flaws like we just we just we just said and uh i i saw a guy in into like a massive store four years ago i thought i thought it was brilliant brilliant but so simple and nobody's doing it because they're all shy like the guy would tape just a video he started with one video he sat in the car with his phone no studio here no you know and um he said he just started, uh, put your red button and said, you know, hi, my name is, uh, Frank. I'm here to help you at, uh, XYZ Mazda. If you've got any questions, I'll be, we'll be in touch. I'll be the associate to help you. Mm-hmm. That's it. So he would send that to people over and over. So, and he would do it in French and English to for, to for a start. Okay. And the guy was French from France. So he had an accent pretty much like me. Right. So you could tell he was not English. Um, but he started doing that and he saw a lift. 
And then at some point he, he, he told himself, you know what? I can't be sending that video at night when I answer leads because it's dark outside and on my video it's bright. So he read it. He read it, the video. So now he had four videos and then a couple of weeks went on and still saw a lift. Okay. Just because, and I got, I saw the video. It's not against him, but it was far from perfect, but that was the reason why it was perfect because it, it was, was real. real. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm a salesperson. I'm a car salesperson. I'm not a TV guy, you know, <laughs> I'm not a TV guy. I, I you should you should see the amount of bloopers I have on my on my uh, my computer doing the, those training videos. It's crazy. But then he read it. He read it the whole thing with every single model. I'm here in the Mazda Tree. I'm here in the Mazda Five, MX Five. You know and the, the whole thing. And just by doing that, he like from his mouth, not mine. He doubled his appointment rate. Didn't change anything mm. else. But he was able to create a connection really, really quick. And people would appreciate him taking the time to do a video, but he actually had 20 on hand and that's it. Super scalable, you know? And, and, and because it introduces him as a person. So look, yeah. if you understand, like, um, I can't, you know, 80% of what we say doesn't come out in black and white text. You know, like it, it, I, I'm not going to be able to say it, you know, in black and white text. It, my body language and my tonality is what's going to show my, my passion and my drive and my intent to want to serve you as an individual. Yep. You know, you're never going to get that with an email. You just not, you know, for as anybody, much as I any, like email marketing, it's not translating. It's no, it's, it's not, not. Well, at least not in black and white. Right. So, so not in the black and white text form of email marketing. Right. So, you know, if, if there's any salespeople out there, managers listening to this and you guys really mm -hmm. want to kind of step up your game this year, like that, that's a mandate. I'm not even saying that's an option. I'm just yeah. straight up saying it's a mandate. All right. You need yep. to shoot a video. You need to send that person a video because it's going to show you as an individual, it's going yep. to show your passion through your tonality. It's going to show your desire to the intent to want to serve someone all right through your body language you were never going to get that in the email you have to start communicating with video yeah there's no excuse because we got the smartphones that are better than like production grade cameras like 10 years ago um youtube is 100 percent free it's easy to do like at least one uh, one put one video you can upload that under five minutes okay no excuse there either so you got the cars you got the setup like everything that's hard into that production or that mm -hmm. that uh, the, you know the, that pr the production of those videos you got it you got the cars oh, that's the, a hard these part. devices like they've suffocated every single excuse we have no no I mean, you know like yeah, it, it's, it's all there you're paying big bucks for your crm on one side so why not try to use that use it this way you know if you're go going to set up automated emails, sending probably a thousand emails per, per week maybe, or per month maybe if you're a smaller store, you know, try to make it as, as good as you can, you know? There's, there's no excuse anymore. That's, uh, I, I know because I started my business on this premise. There's no excuse. I, 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 I want to get I love that. message That's... to more people. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was I was helping one, two, three person at 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 a time in the past, but now I'm able to send a thousand emails per month. Um, you know, it's just the way it is. You and I love that. See... that. That kind of seems to be the overall theme of this entire podcast, right? It's like yeah. there's no excuse. There's just nope. no excuse. Okay. You know, you want to execute, yeah. you want to up your game, you want to hit your forecast this year. All right. You need to bring more value to the customer. All yeah. right. And and it's not going to be value in just the product. Depending on your manufacturer, it really may not be the value of the product. Okay. The value is going to have to come, all right, from your operations experience. Okay. And from that person to person connection. Yep. Hey, um, Mark, thank you so much for taking the time to jam with me today. I know that's our time. Thanks um, to you. Uh, this was, this was a lot of fun. I'm pretty sure we're going to do another one of these yeah, for everyone out there that's listening or watching and would love to connect with you and learn more about what you're doing. What's the best way to do so? Uh, you know, I, I've been trying to focus on the two main, two main areas. Uh, I've been trying to 
put more content out on LinkedIn. I'm uh, easy to uh, to find there. It's uh, Mark Lavoie. I don't know if you'll uh, you'll uh, you'll write it down somewhere. I'll put the tax on it. Yeah, good, <laughs> perfect. Okay, so that and uh, you can find me at uh, AutobahnAcademy.com as well, where all the content, uh, you know, the cheat sheets, the resources are. Uh, if you want to personally connect, feel free to send me any. Um, an email art at mark at autobahnacademy.com as well. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Mark, so much for taking the thanks time to have me today. This was a lot of fun. Awesome. Thank you.